Look, you're wearing pink, right? You think you're You're cool. wearing every colour under the f sun. You've turned up looking like a tic tac at the top <laughs> and, and at the bottom, actually. You know, you've, I... got, you've got a bright orange jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like when you've got gym at 12 and working on the A414 at fucking one. <laughs> What's the 414? Where's... It's a fucking road. You look like you're doing fucking roadworks, mate. You've turned up in a high vis, you Paul, the cameraman said that I look like an upside down carrot. Yeah, you, 100%. <laughs> he actually does. Good. I like that. Upside down carrot. Well, nice. you, you can't see it now because I'm taking the jacket off. Anyway, don't be afraid just to shoot from the hip, Pete. Take us away. Welcome to Staying Relevant with me, Pete Wicks, and Sam Thompson, Tony Bellew's best friend. <laughs> Would you like to do anything for the intro? Uh, Pete is going to be swearing. No, that's the bit I do. Oh, you right. Do your okay, bit. Cool. He's uh, he's an, he's going to be drinking. And, he's uh, not. He's not okay. drinking still. I'll just do this. Okay. Uh, I am still not drinking, uh, but I will be swearing. If you don't like that, go f yourself. Yeah. Piss as off. <laughs> yes. Piss off. As always, uh, you can catch us every Monday, wherever you get your podcasts from. Every Thursday, we release a new episode, the bonus episode. Again, wherever you get your podcasts from. And then you can watch them on Friday, respectively, and Sunday. So that's Monday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. Monday, Thursday, Thursday Friday, Friday, and Sunday. And Sunday. Monday, Thursday, Friday. Friday, Sunday. Beautiful. And where can they find us, Sam? YouTube. And Snapchat, Snappy C, and TikTok. Oh, all of the socials. Yeah. Yeah. TikTok, Insta, YouTube, Snappy C. And and what is it? At Staying Relevant. There you go. Job there done. Go. Shall we get on with it then? We have a really big week ahead of us, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, we've got a lot to discuss. Like, there, there, there's, there's goings on. That's all you need to know. Okay, well, I'm just going to start with an update on our bonus episode, which has just come out, which yeah. was uh, the Cody... Um, nose, eat, mouth, bogey story. Um, something for you, Sam. Yep. You've actually met Cody's fiance before. <laughs> the one who fingered his own nostril and then made her eat it. Oh, you've, when? You've, you've met him before. You met in a uh, cameo in Andover in 2018 when you were doing a PA. Um, and Cody's actually sent a photo in of Shut you. Shut up. So no. we've actually got a photo of you both. So there's, Shut up. Bring it in. I can't see from there's there. There's you and Cody's fiance, sorry. He looks so young. He's got a great nose. You can tell that you can stick a finger up that one. Yeah. So uh, I look no different. So <laughs> old? No, same. you do. You look old. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. That's six years ago. So I, parents paid for that 13, education. 29, 28, 27. Parents 26, paid 25. for that education. I was Bald 25. In yeah. Wow. Yeah. So are you the reason that he's the way he is? No, I'm not. I don't really pick my nose that much. No. Actually, I do. I do pick my nose. Yeah, no, I've seen, yeah, a couple yeah. of times. I've, I mean, I say to you quite often, pick as a winner. Yeah, you do. That's, that's yeah. your go-to phrase, actually. Yeah, yeah thank I you. I can't believe we've met Cody. Anyway, uh, now we're going to move on to what it says on the sheet here, which is opening conversation. So to start the opening conversation, Sam, you were reunited with Marvin. I was. Yeah. Fabulous. Big Marv. How was that? So nice. He's just such a lovely bloke. You Axel forget. Axel and Smurf reunited. Not Smurf. It's Axel and Murph. Whatever. Like Agent Murph. Yeah. A Agent Murph. Uh, and Axwell. Yeah. And how was Axwell? In a world. That's what we do together. So, like, we make trailers. In a world, this summer comes Pete Wicks with the pink beanie. Pete's wearing a pink beanie, by the way. Right. Okay. So, how was that for you? Was it nice? It was amazing. You did the obligatory jump on the back and give me a piggyback photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I yeah, actually yeah. asked him for that one as yeah, well. Yeah, of course you did. Yeah, Sam so loves that one. We were getting a photo for the gram together, and I was like, "Do you mind if I just jump on your back?" And I imagine, um, considering you posted it and he didn't, it was you that asked for the photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was yeah, me who yeah. asked for the photo, and uh, it was a lovely moment. It really was because I hadn't actually seen him since the jungle. And did you sing Everybody in Love? We did, we did. We sang Everybody in Love. We actually sang One Shot as well because that's now one of my favourites, I think. I, I, you won't need get one shot, so make it count. You may never get this moment again. It's just so good. I actually called, you'll quite like this, Pete, because I used to do this to you quite a bit. I moved on now. Uh, <laughs> Well, that was a fucking shot to the heart I, I wasn't I, expecting. I called Marvin at seven in the morning when I was on the way to this morning, which we have to talk about right away because that was We'll get into it. And um, and I called him on the way there and he picked up and he went, are you all right, mate? Well, like, what, what's going on? It was seven. And I just went, I just got to let you know, mate, you've, you've really recorded some bangers. 
<laughs> and he was like, are you fucking joking? He was like, we haven't really spoken that much on the phone since the jungle. You've called me at seven in the morning. I've panicked. And you've told me that JLS have recorded. He was pissed off. He was just like, what the fuck, man? My kids are asleep. <laughs> um... So the uh, as you can tell, I have nothing to say to that. Uh, so we're just, I'm just going to move on. So you met in Rochelle's office. Yeah. Um, She's got a beautiful office. My God. Because I spoke to Rochelle. Yeah. Um, and she was like, "Oh, my office smells of boys now." <laughs> um, and then I, so I replied back to her saying, "Because they're not as fragrant as me and her." And um, she replied back with, "So Rochelle and I, whilst Sam and Marvin were in the jungle, we we gave ourselves a nickname, which was Jungle Wag." So she put jungle jungle wags forever, and then I replied with something that I think is possibly the most embarrassing thing that I've ever done. Oh wait, would you tell me it's had a hashtag before it? No, it didn't. But I put um, jungle wags four with the number four. Oh no! Life L Y F. <laughs> no! And then sent a second message saying, "I don't know why I said that. I'm so sorry." <laughs> He's panicked. He's fully British. She thought, say she just laughed. <laughs> And ended the conversation. <laughs> Next, it's OOTD. Pete does an outfit of the day. <laughs> OOTD. Let's pop you on the ground. Yeah, I'll do it with a um, GR. Get, get ready with GR. Yeah, get ready with me. Excellent. Um, so that was that. But anyway, bigger news. Well, no, uh, what, I'm not finished yet. Oh, you, is there more about there, Marvin? Yeah, there's more. There's more. Okay, cool. We um, we we decided that uh, I've got my my own JLS condom coming out. Okay, excellent. Uh, yeah. So uh, look forward to that. It's extra small. It is. It's the extra small. It actually is. I thought to myself, I said, well, I didn't think to myself, I said to Marvin, I went, look, mate, I really want to be a representation of the smaller condoms. And so I was like, mate, if you don't mind, like, I'd love just to sort of like, just take one for the team there and have the XS because I've noticed that no one else has one. And so I've got my, na so I've got my, my, my colour is purple. Doing it for the team. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so cameraman pulled you then, oh, and then looked around, panicked. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, wonderful. Now, moving on to, um, obviously, since the jungle, you have been inundated with work and your, your favourite job at the minute is you are a sort of on probation at this morning. <laughs> That's the perfect word to describe it. You are on probation at this morning. So this week, Sam did another segment. Sam did a segment uh, for something that you are very famous for from the jungle, which is... The hug. You broke a world record. I broke a world record. <laughs> Still, not much energy behind that clap, but yeah, I did. It was, it, and also an official Guinness world record. Oh, wonderful! Explain. So basically, it was the world record for the amount of hugs you can do in a minute, right? Do you know what you had to be? One point four six hugs a minute, a second. I was going to say that's that. <laughs> yeah. I, to be honest with you, I think we could probably do that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1.46 hugs a second. Right. So one and a half Hard. hugs a second. So. Well, especially as you linger. Yeah, no, but this is the point. So I had to be really ruthless with the people. Like, it got kind of weird. So, like, basically. So can I just, is it your world record yeah. specifically yeah. yours? Yeah, Sam I have Thompson. it in my house. Yeah. An official wow. Guinness World Record plaque. So JP, one of my friends, Josh Patterson, he's just broke a world record for running a marathon in every city in the UK, right? Yeah, I think and it was 76 marathons 76 in, 76 in 76 days. days. So consecutive. So JP, amazing. Love JP. Yeah, I'm on the that. same. I'm on the same level as 76 marathons in 76 days because I have broken the record. We both have the same plaque, <laughs> which is amazing. Yeah, but... That that's you know you also both have penises, but his is a lot better than yours. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's a, it's a similar it's a similar vibe that one. But mate, I still have one, which I think is so cool. So I turn up, Sean and by Sea, right? Lovely place. Now the reason I was actually meant to be there is yes to break the record, but also because apparently Sean and by Sea was voted in the UK as the most unhappy town. Yeah, uh, it's where I was born. Is it? No. Oh. <laughs> Would have made so much sense. But it was so his vote is the most unhappy town in the UK. And so I had to go there and ask them, why are you so unhappy? They were the loveliest people. They couldn't understand it, bless them. They were all sitting there going, well, I don't understand. It's a lovely place to live. I don't know why everyone thinks we're miserable. But I imagine that's because there was, you know, how many people were there? Mate, like 500. All right. So I imagine, what's the population? 
I don't know. So I imagine that's the 500 happy people and all the miserable people <laughs> didn't turn up to see you because they were at home going, why is that prick down in our fucking town? Because that's what happened, is just the 500 people that are <laughs> is that occasionally <laughs> fucking happy turned up because they're happy and then everyone else was just at home fucking going, what is this dickhead doing in my town? Yeah. Hugging ooh, people. Oh, jungle. Nice ooh, one. Oh, look at you. <laughs> Fucking Bellews boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. So I got the 500 nice people. So how many did you do? So well, I actually failed on the first attempt, which was live. Oh, so you didn't even do it on the first attempt? No, I did it on the second. So, so did you have to repeat hug people? So you only get three goes. So this is actually, so basically we had two executives from the Guinness World Records there and they're really savage with it. She was literally like, right, like I, I'll tell you if you get a hug wrong. And, 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 and H so how, sorry, sorry, how do you get a hug wrong? So basically you've got to touch chests and just really quickly wrap your arms around them. This is where it got a little bit weird because I had to tell them quite forcefully because a lot of people just turned up because they wanted a hug, a Sam Thompson hug, which is quite nice. And uh, <laughs> Pete, don't look so depressed. They wanted the Sam Thompson hug. Mm -hmm. And the problem is though, so they would sort of like wrap their arms around. So I had to be like, no, 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 guys. You have to run at me. <laughs> so it ended up with me being stood behind a line. And these lovely people with their arms fixed behind their <laughs> next to their sides, running at me like a salmon. <laughs> and then and I had to basically just chest pump them, wrap my arms and throw them away. So everyone's literally like, like, oh, yeah, we're having so much fun. But then it got quite serious. <laughs> And I was like, run, run, run. But we did break the record the second time round. Okay, well done. So well done to Sam Thompson, record breaker slash king of the jungle. Um, that's not all you've been up to, though. Is it not? No, because it was actually on this morning as well. Josie mentioned it. You had date night. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> And I feel like we need to discuss date night. Oh, mate, I've had... This went viral. I can't understand it. Well, listen, let's... Uh, I mean, it, it went viral on TikTok. You actually prompted a viral TikTok... Oh, no. ...of people saying... Slagging me off. Men need to make more effort these days. So let me set the scene. Sam and Zara go out for dinner. I'm going to correct you, by the because, way, if you correct this, so, Well, you can correct me as much as you want, but what you should do is correct your outfit. Oh. So Sam and Zara... They're very busy, as you can imagine, two of the most... They are the golden couple of TV currently. <laughs> um, so very busy. So what they've decided for the new year is that they're going to make a conscious effort to do date night. And Friday is the best night to do that. So first date night of the year. Got one tonight. First, they have got one tonight. Date night, so Zara, as you can imagine... Always looks fucking lovely. Always makes a real effort. Had a wonderful red dress. So she's made a lot of effort to go. You went to a lovely restaurant. Uh, Sam, your thought press was uh, thought process must have been date night. Let's get dressed. <laughs> Let's get dressed. Yes, and and I did get dressed in what I thought because I don't understand. I think date nights about being comfortable. It, it is when you're at home. Yeah, but no, but I did. I was I was wearing a, a really nice hoodie. No, purple's my you colour. You weren't. You I weren't. Was. You weren't wearing a nice hoodie. You look like the little fucking. Blackberry from the Ribena advert. Tell that to the colour purple, which actually in ancient Greek times was mm. a very, very um, good colour to wear because it was hard to get the dye. So that's why purple Amazing. is actually so that's a cool on. story that we were all really interested in, but I don't think it's that cool to wear on a date night just outside Harrods. Well, um, sorry, excuse me, because I got called Justin Bieber. Well, this is the point. Yeah. So the point of this is, is you've been absolutely slated by people all, all over... Right. All over Zara's Instagram, your Instagram, TikTok, everywhere. Even Josie took the piss out of you on this morning because you literally look a fucking state. Can you explain why you don't make any effort? I put up this photo and I gen gen genuinely thought this is a lovely photo of me. It's Zara. a really lovely from the neck up. <laughs> yeah, and then and then the problem is I then when I I and I posted it and I went, this is this is gonna do really well. I was like, this is gonna do really well. Look at the look at the phone and just comments. I was like, oh god, people are obviously really loving the fact that it's date night. And look at the comments. It's literally I, after a minute, I could just tell the way it's going to go. <laughs> and literally, you're just there. And just so I was like, oh, these are oh. <laughs> she was like, oh. <laughs> Mate, it got worse and worse and worse. Within an hour, there's a thousand comments, all of them being like, it's disgusting how how men treat women when they go out for date night now. And I'm there going, I can't delete it. I'm like, I can't delete this photo. It's been the, up for too long. The thing is, the restaurant you went to, I know the restaurant, and it is a lovely restaurant, but it's not like a super, super fancy, no. fancy restaurant, but it is a nice restaurant, and it was Friday night. 
So it, it just, I mean, I personally wouldn't wouldn't dress like that, but that's because I'm um, not an idiot. Yeah, do you know what? As However, well? I'm going to give you the backstory to this, which is that although it looks like Sam has made no effort, Sam made a lot of effort to look that bad. <laughs> and let me tell you why. Because Sam has got this thing now where he thinks, and this is this is the saddest thing, if you look like you're making no effort because you make no effort, it's kind of cool. If you look like you've made no effort because you're trying to look like you've made no effort, you're a fucking idiot. So what Sam did was put on a nice flash watch <laughs> and then dress shit because he thinks that's Justin Bieber. So when the comments started coming through of Justin and Hayley Bieber, because Justin Bieber looks like he's just been dug up most of the time whilst she makes low of effort, Sam secretly, although he's going, oh, no, I can't believe, loves it. <laughs> Absolutely loves it. Because I've heard him when we've been together going, well, it's that kind of Justin Bieber vibe, isn't it? That's exactly what you do. Can so I you specifically, quickly, rather yeah. than putting on, listen, you'll go to this morning wearing a lovely knitted polo <laughs> and a pair of fucking loafers. And then when you actually go out for dinner with your missus, you think, oh, I just don't give a shit. I'll just put on a bit of fucking jewellery and look like I just, you know, I'm just so chilled out. But you've thought that through. It's a style. Just admit it's a style that you want to be. Can I correct Pete that a little LA bit That LA kind of vibe. So I turn up and uh, Pete, we, we take a photo and Pete sends me a message going, I'll see what you've done there. Pete saw Pete. Pete, knew. I know him. No, but the thing is, my issue comes right. Where I was like, I wasn't trying to be Justin Bieber. I know I can't be because I didn't realise that it was that unliked. <laughs> I didn't realise when people were like, "Oh, it's giving Justin Bieber." I was like, "This is great." I was like, "This is perfect." But then, like, then I sort of dug into it a little bit more. Everyone hates it. <laughs> I didn't realise that no one likes that. So when they started going, "This is giving me Justin Haley," I went, "Zara, you're never going to believe this." But Justin Haley and Zara, they went, "No, but that's not a good thing." It's 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 quite arrogant. Dressing like that, I think, I think is quite arrogant. No, but not. What you're saying is, I don't care enough to make an effort. No, what so, you're saying is, is that the place that we're going, as lovely as it is, it's not. So, for example, this I, one, I'm actually nearly replying to one of the comments, and I didn't. But th this got to me because you it, know Sam serious when he interconnects the hands. Yeah, I've interlocked inter my fingers. <laughs> is that I actually, if you look a couple of, if, if anyone cares to look a couple of photos before that. I took Zara for a birthday for dinner at the Ritz. Or a full-blown suit. Sam, Sam, because you have to. You can't go to the Ritz no, you just and have, have to wear dinner. A jacket. I wear a full-blown suit. Okay, all right. So you have to wear a jacket. So what else are you going to wear other no, than but that? the point I'm making is, it's not that I'm literally like, I never want to look smart with my beautiful girlfriend. I just thought, well, we're going to this restaurant. No, you didn't. This is this is where the lie is coming in. <laughs> because this is where the lie. I'm just, I, you know, I just don't care. I'll just throw anything on. He would have picked that out. All right. The bit that I think gets me the most. Why have you just looked at your notes? What have you written down in your notes? The, the bit that gets me the most, um, and this is something that coming aggravates from me. Pink shoe wear of Pete over here. Listen, I make an effort. It scared me when he went, listen, just then. I make an effort. Um, the bit that gets me the most, uh, which you've done for years, and I still don't understand, and uh, today we haven't got it because we've got some Uggs, grey Uggs with green tracksuit bottoms, a black fucking hoodie, and a bright orange jacket. <laughs> um, but it's when you 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 have the sort of not really properly laced up high tops. Oh, this is what everyone with makes skinny before. jeans. Yeah, I know. Tucked into the fucking high top with the socks pulled over the jeans. I don't understand why you. I don't know where you've seen that and thought, God, that looks good. No, but I think... because you look a fucking idiot. Yeah, but there's not. <laughs> that's so brutal. But you, you look. I a haven't fucking even moron. thought about it that hard. Yes, you have. I haven't. I know I have, you. I haven't. This, I, I tell haven't. you what. Listen, uh, uh, people that listen to the podcast will know that fashion is not your forte based on little Gucci belt. Oh God! You know I've got a few comments actually being like I'm waiting for the little Gucci belt. I went off for God's sake. However, can, listen, I just, can I quickly just say something? The tongue of the high tops was a real problem. I got so much hate for that, and I didn't even understand. Apparently, it's got to be straight. But mine yeah, is off to the side because my, they're old high tops. They were dirty. There was a guy called Charlie who did a TikTok and absolutely battered me. Right. So, but look, terrible from you. That's that's from me. I think everyone in here would agree with that. If you're going out, ladies, if you're going out on date night. Uh, your partner, you want him to make a bit of an effort. If you're making a bit of an effort, you've got a heart-shaped dress on, you want to, you want to, you know, your boy to go, listen, I'm going to make an effort. I have learned from my mistake. So tonight, we have date night. Yeah. Are you going to put it right? You'll have to wait and see. I already know what he's doing because he rang me to tell me. <laughs> 
All right, so prepare yourself for this because I do already know what he's doing. <laughs> Sam tonight is going on date night wearing a tux. <laughs> But the reason that Sam is doing that, and let me tell you another little secret, let you into another little thing, is for the likes. Because he knows people will go mad and then go, oh, it's just so funny. Look how funny, look how funny he is. He's wearing a tux. It sorts through. Well, it's not and girls. problem, everyone it's had a problem. Um, through. But let me tell you something else. I have seen the one tux that Sam's own, uh, Sam owns, <laughs> and it will be the one tux that Sam owns. Um, What's it going to be? Which probably hasn't been dry cleaned. It has actually been. No, oh, it hasn't. No, it hasn't been dry cleaned oh, no. since last time um, because you only dry clean it when you've got an event to go to wearing a tux, but now you have to do it. You've been kind of forced into wearing forced a tux. Into it so you haven't had time yeah. to dry clean it, so now you're just going to wear it from last time. Yeah. Um, so uh, true. <laughs> Yeah, are you, we, are you going with the waistcoat? Uh, yes, and also a bow tie. Oh, you're going to go bow tie? Yeah, not tie, bow tie. Oh, because normally you wear black tie yeah. with it, but you're going to go bow tie. Yeah, I think it has more of an effect. <laughs> Clip on, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because last time Sam actually asked me to tie his bow tie for him. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, anyway. Which Pete struggled with as well, to be yeah, fair. It's really hard to do it on someone else, you know, tie a bow tie. Yeah. Yeah, has you ever tried to do it? When I mean, I eventually... It's hard to do on yourself. Like, I, I struggle to do my own ones. It takes a bit of time to get the right knot because you have to have the right dimple. When, I, when I eventually get married, Pete's going to be my best man. And I can't wait for that moment that I get like Pete to do my bow tie for me before I go down the down the aisle. I, I mean, stag do. All, all I got out of that is stag do. <laughs> the, the, the rest of it, I don't care. I might not even come to the wedding. Yeah, stag, stag do. I'm there for. You'd have to. Yeah, but then you'd have to chill with all my mates. Uh, no, we'd do a separate one. Just, <laughs> just me and you. Pete hates hanging with my mates. No, I don't. I really like your friends. Tarkwood and the boys. <laughs> yeah, CO. <laughs> CO and Monty. Monty! Monty, Monty! Monty, um, come over here, we're having a tequila. <laughs> yes, we are having Tequils O'Neills. That's what I call it, I call it Tequils O'Neills. That's call it. If um, we're going really wild, Tequils O'Neills on me, boys! So that's that, so look forward to seeing Sam's tux on date night. Um, well, yeah, but you're the problem. Everyone out there is the problem because you're forcing me. You're forcing my hand. No, Sam, you, you, right. This is the worst part. You want, you specifically wore that because you thought it was a look. <laughs> it's not, the, if you just don't care about the way you look, I don't mind. I'm fine with well, that. Well, look what I'm wearing now. It's not like I've thrown this on thinking this is a look, have I? I wouldn't surprise me <laughs> if you have. Because at some point this morning, I've seen your your um, wardrobe and everything else. There's a lot of things that you can put on that you know will be fine and uh, just easy to do. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> like this today, I thought you've gone out there to go, oh, what is the thing that goes least with green? <laughs> oh, a bright orange jacket. <laughs> Which I'm not even wearing right now. C can, we, can we just have the jacket? Yeah. I just want to, right, just, just have a look. This is what he turned up wearing. And uh, yeah, it's because it's so cold. Paul is right because uh, you do look like an upside down carrot. This is what I was wearing. When it's minus degrees outside, fashion goes out the window. Pete, you're wearing the same clothes as yesterday. No, I'm not. You are. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah, we'll talk about it in a minute. I've got a picture of me yesterday because I'd love same it. sock, same shoes, same trousers, same beanie, same, same jacket, same shoes, same jacket, same. Beanie. Um, beanie. Same trousers. No, it's not the same trousers, actually. Different trousers. Um, and definitely different socks. I've got new pants on. Um, Let's see your pants. Prove it. <laughs> Prove it. Oh, there's me, by the way, if you can't see. Oh, we're wearing the same. Well, we're not really, are we? Okay. It's yeah. the same brand. <laughs> well, Brothers. Think everyone wears Calvin Klein's anyway. That's not like Brothers. a fucking, That's not a Sam and Pete thing. Oh, they wear Calvin's together. When did this podcast become a fashion show? It well, doesn't matter. Yeah, this is this is a little bit like one of them American shows where they go and what's everyone wearing this week, and then they go through the things, isn't it? I'm taking anyway, this back on. yeah, please do. Um, anyway, so we've moved on from that. Look forward to the tux. Enjoy a date night. Have a lovely time. Your same relevant moment for this week was channeling Bieber. No, because I didn't mean to channel you Bieber. You did. No, Why are you lying? No, I'm not. Sam, you're no, fucking lying. I'm not having it. I know you. No, I'm not you're, having listen, it. Listen, you beady little twat. <laughs> you're lying. <laughs> you are lying. 
You beardy little twat. So, Pete, that's my same relevant moment. That wasn't even meant to be a same relevant moment, but it's turned out you quite tried. badly for me. You tried. Yeah, I wanted it to look good. And I've, got... just, I've just made no effort, but so much effort. But no effort, but so much effort. But no effort, Well, now so I know that people effort. hate Bieber. I won't be doing it again. I, it, it, just, just fucking dress appropriately for your age as well, man. Oh, my God. Pete's wearing a be little beanie. A tiny little beanie that doesn't even go over the ears. Has anyone seen that um, that song that Paul Rudd sang? Tiny little beanie. I think the tumbleweed suggests no. It's a teeny weeny beanie. Pete, what have you, been, what have you done to stay relevant this week? What well, have you been up to? I opened the notebook. Oh, he opened the notebook. Come on. Now, if you know what the notebook the is, explain the, it. The tour is in process. We have made moves and it has come from my imagination to paper, to our producer, who uh, is the first to, to, to hear my thoughts and feelings on the tour. So we had a meeting um, yesterday, in fact. Uh, Sam didn't come. Uh, I'm not allowed, by the way. Pete won't let me come until it's ready. Sam has nothing to offer. Um, so, so we had the meeting yesterday and it went very well. So my staying relevant moment is staying relevant. So the, tour, have, the live tour. I have been sent some undercover videos of Pete Wicks at this meeting at a WeWork. I do not feel like this is going to go well. And, and listen to how it's actually really cute. Listen to how keen Pete sounds, right? But my view of the stage is basically going to be <laughs> like this. Mm -hmm. So, what I need is, and I'm going to explain this to you because I love it exactly. <laughs> and then there's another one. I mean, pre this is there's just other things that I've done. But the stand relevant is ready to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can hear the page turn. Mm -hmm. Diagrams. Diagrams. Some and that and some extra bits and a couple more pages. But you get the done diagrams. Pete, let me just squeeze you. I have to squeeze you now. Actually, I'm sorry. You just must be squeezed. Oh. Oh, your diagrams and your little words that you write. It's just the sweetest thing ever. And I actually saw the diagrams. He's really put, he's two pages of diagrams, actually. There was, there was two pages of diagrams and 11 pages of... Um, notes. I don't like the way we're calling them notes. Because notes suggest that they're just suggestions. No, it's what we're doing. <laughs> okay? It is the tour format... It's done. It's, it's there. Done. It's, it's, it's there. And listen, before, because I, I know you're just going to take the piss now, Charlotte. Producer Charlotte. What producer do you think? Charlotte, you are the first person who has seen inside my mind. <laughs> and, the, and the darkness that's, that's there. No, because I didn't open them pages. <laughs> Charlotte, <laughs> how is the tour looking? Five stars. Hey! Five fucking stars. Oh, actually, quite big news as well. I had a meeting at ITV last week. And some of the biggest of big dogs at the channel want to come and watch. I know. So Sam has got some big ITV commissioners coming to the show. I have got my friends from Harley Davidson and Stringfellas. <laughs> but do you know what that? But it's wild because they are literally coming and down. And my accountant. I've but, invited my accountant. But they are they're, they're coming down specifically. To see Sam. No, 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 no. To see us in action. Yeah, no. To see if we can mix it. This is like, a, this is genuinely like this, a pilot. Th no, do you know what this is? The, the best part about this is that Sam keeps saying um, about me, you know, doing the bits for the show. They're coming down to see Sam. And if it's great, we'll give him a show. Not me. No, us. Us. Genuinely us. Not to add any pressure on, but loads of pressure. Absolutely no pressure. I don't feel any pressure. I do. I get really nervous. And, and the problem is I start stumbling over my words. I don't feel pressure. I, I, I'm honestly, you asked me this yesterday, didn't you? I get super nervous. No, I think it'll be fine. We discussed a few things for you because there were um, a number of bits that I've, I've just got allow for Sam and whether or not you're going to want auto cue and other bits and bobs because I know you, you know. Mm. I don't but, know. But I think we're going to go with cue cards. Oh, I don't, I don't know about cards. Oh, God. Um, also, Honestly, I was already panicking. I'm already panicking. Also, for microphone choices and that, I think it's better that we have a Britney. What's a Britney? A oh, Britney Spears! <laughs> Rather than holding a microphone. Um, he wants a Britney Spears! <laughs> yeah, I think that's... that. We discussed that that's actually better, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, my God. Do it all, yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> 
So I'll be having oh, a Britney. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, is what I heard just then from Pete. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, listen, it went well. But that do we have... Oh, sorry. Really quick question for the live, for the, for the, the live tour. Do we have some, like, celebrity tickets? You know, if I, if I want to give Maya a ticket, for example, like, or um, if Pete wants to give, you know... I, it, it will all be discussed. I have put that in one of the other sections of the notebook, which we'll get to. So we're, we're doing it bit by bit. <laughs> bit by bit, are we? Yeah. Because, do you know what? I right, feel... right now, she's got enough to be getting on with. So Pete has uh, gone to this meeting with producer Charlotte. The beauty of producer Charlotte is uh, that she's uh, she's really good at multitasking. It's not only is she making Pete believe that she's in the room with him, she's also taking notes. Well, now, to be honest with you, considering I've seen the amount of notes that you wrote for this episode of the podcast, I don't believe you actually listened to anything <laughs> I said yesterday or wrote any of the notes that you were supposed to be transcribing from my head and notebook. So, Pete, Pete joked by saying... I have lighting options. Charlotte got ready to type, genuinely believing him. So you don't have lighting options at all? No, I've got... Well, I have, because part of my stage, because it's going to... Listen, my stage. I, I don't want to give it away, but th there are options that I've said. But obviously, I, you know, Charlotte and I are going to go for a meeting with Phil McIntyre next week, um, who are the people putting this on, where I'm going to talk them through the, 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 you know, the lighting options and what other little bits we need, because that's in the uh, extras and alterations segment. My favourite thing about these notes, I think, so far, is as I'm reading, Pete was an hour early <laughs> to the meeting. An hour. This is the first time he'd been early to anything staying relevant related. Bear in mind, he was half an hour late for this recording. He was an hour early. He Can waited. I just point out, Wait, no, no, no. so was Sam. He waited in a pub around the corner from the office, regularly texting producer Charlotte while she was in a meeting saying, hurry up, we have content to write. <laughs> <laughs> you take it so seriously and I love it because this is a, a listen it's the biggest thing we've ever done well we've sold a lot of tickets for people who are expecting a good show I and if we leave it to, to just turning up and sitting on a couple of sofas like this you're going to be fucking sorely disappointed <laughs> alright so I have made you a show and I, when I say show I mean the greatest show of all time. He also sent a photo of his pint to the group, which I actually got this one, and uh, prompted responses such as meetings and fuel. <laughs> because if you have listened to the pod before, you'll know that we we love our, our really, really bum out Instagram caption quotes. Like, you know, when people have a laptop there and they go office for a day. Well, that's what Pete's done. He's taken a photo of his Guinness at 11 in the morning and gone and written underneath meetings. I, I just want to point out that I didn't put it on my story. I, I was about to and then started seeing the messages coming through because I was about to put it and then didn't because I thought don't do that. Fuel. It, I, don't, I was actually in the process. I'd, I, I just put that up um, and I was actually looking through some depressing music to put over the top of it. <laughs> oh but, no! But um, uh, I, I, I didn't do that because it started pinging with oh meetings fuel. <laughs> But first, but yeah, but first, but first, and my favourite one from Saffron was Iron, because <laughs> yeah, I like that as well. Anyway, producer Charlotte was then subject. And by the way, this is Charlotte who's writing this. Producer Charlotte was then subject to the most intense meeting of her life. <laughs> they were sat. <laughs> they were sat directly opposite each other, with Pete staring at her while she typed, react, reciting from his notebook. I can imagine you doing that's the thing I can see it happening if, with it, Pete leaning forward going you've got that yeah you've got that with his eyes really wide being like you've got that and then and then be like can I just see what you've typed quickly <laughs> yeah yeah okay yeah no that's how I want to do it oh no probably take that bit out actually this is how I actually want to do it I I, I imagine producer Charlotte was sweating I mean uh, at one point she did say I, I think you've made your point yeah <laughs> But I just, I, I just needed to make sure it was in there. <laughs> now, Pete hadn't said this before, but he had separated his vision into chapters, <laughs> such as graphics and promotion, or G, G and P's. <laughs> You'd abbreviate it. <laughs> G's and P's. <laughs> so, um, so now we're going to talk about our G's and P's. Please <laughs> note, what the fuck has happened to you? What has happened to you? I just wanted to get it right. <laughs> and, and extras and additionals. No, it's extras. E's and A's. Extras and alterations, because that includes the contingency plans if we couldn't do some the of the things. The contingency plan. 
<laughs> We've got a contingency. Oh my god! Well, I can't wait, guys. If you're listening and you're coming to the live show, I I cannot wait until we have to enact a contingency plan. <laughs> and we and I, I we have to make sure they know as well. well. Because I've not seen the venues, there are some things that might not work in some venues. I really hope. So in which case, there is a plan B for other bits that we can we can put in. Because <laughs> you know it has to be the best show for everyone that is that, that is there. I really hope that halfway through we have to enact a contingency plan. It, well, and then Pete has to apologise. I'm really sorry. We've got to go to plan B. <laughs> <laughs> These live shows are going to be the best thing ever. I just, <laughs> I just wasn't expecting this response. So, so, just a thank you would have been fine. So basically, Pete's got chapters. He's got G's and P's, E's and A's. He's got it all. He's, he said he had lighting options, which after the E's and A's and G's and P's, <laughs> Charlotte actually thought was true, but he joked. He doesn't have lighting options. No, no, I don't, no, I don't actually have the, the lighting options. However, for the, you know, the promotionals However. and uh, for everything else, we've, yeah, we've, we've got, there's, there's good shit in there. We've so got fuck we yourselves. Need. We've got all we need. Uh, we're not done. Pete would occasionally stop talking and gay, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Okay. In this meeting, Pete would occasionally stop talking and gaze into the distance and just say, God, I'm embarrassing, before continuing straight away. Stop owing him. Listen, I, 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 I would just like it to be the best that it could be. I've seen Pete gaze into the distance when we used to do TikTok dances together because he doesn't ever want to come around anymore. Um, he, he, would, he would sometimes gaze into the distance, but he'd be like, I used to have a real job. That was his one. That was his thing. He used to gaze in the distance when I was making him do some Harry Potter form dance. And he'd just gaze in the distance and go, God, what am I doing in my life? He used to really, really make me laugh. I used to love it. And now he's doing it about the live show. Well, look, I, 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 you know, I imagine it was quite intense for you, Charlotte. So I, I apologise for that because I did speak at you for quite a long time. Well, actually, a good example for that is when he took his first break and looked up, it was dark outside. <laughs> The office was almost completely vacated and the cleaner was whizzing the hoover out. Yeah, I mean, that is, it, it was quite distracting, actually, listening to fucking Henry going off Does in the background. Everyone had gone home. Charlotte was drained. <laughs> in Charlotte's words. Charlotte was drained. Charlotte was drained, but Pete, on the other hand, was the most energetic and bouncy version of himself. <laughs> I can imagine it now. Pete had literally... Charlotte was drained. Pete, had, Pete was was so over the moon that this had happened. He was like, I just can't wait to get going. I just can't wait to get cracking. Well, look, I'm excited about it. I think, uh, you, you know, I cannot believe you just put you were drained. <laughs> yeah, I really thought that, that that was a really successful meeting. <laughs> Pete then asked for outfit pics and was devastated when he was informed people don't take boomerangs on Instagram anymore. <laughs> I didn't realise that this was a thing. He replied morosely, oh no, I posted one the other day. <laughs> you're like a you're like a split between my dad and like you're like you're like a you're like a you're like a hybrid between like a really old young person. What do you mean? Well like you like you just you're not up with the trends. Well I don't fucking know. I've only really just discovered boomerangs that you can do a setting on it. And uh, finally, on his exit, Charlie got a quick look into his stainless... Charlie. All right, Charlie, Chess. Sorry. All right, Chess. <laughs> sorry. It? When have we ever called her Charlie? Well, I feel like Charlie and Charlie. I, I feel like Charlie's Charlie, like... does anyone call you Charlie? I feel like you've been called it... You must have been called it as a, as a nickname before. I don't, she, doesn't, she doesn't look like a Chess or a Charlie. She I'm, sure. I'm going to call you Chess. All right, fine. On his exit, Charlie... <laughs> fucking hell. On his exit, on her... On his exit, Charlotte got a quick look into his famous briefcase. All that was in there was a notebook. All that was in there was a notebook and a packet of McCoy's crisps. You carry that fucking briefcase around with you everywhere. I'm just and gonna... that is all you have in it. Okay, well you see it that way. What I see in there is imagination, gold, and sustenance. <laughs> 
All right. So Sorry. you may see it as a packet of crisps and a notebook. Oh my god! But for he me, that fucking briefcase around me, everywhere. It's an insight into my brain and 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 uh, you know a little something to keep me going throughout the day. And everyone thinks that Pete, like they go, God, he's like, God, he's really got his shit together, Pete Wicks. Like, what's he got in there? Like, he's probably got a laptop. Yeah, he's probably. Just oh, got, I don't like computers. He's probably, you know, he's got got pen. I bet he's got like there's a, a pen in there. There was a pen in there. I bet, I bet he's got. I bet, I bet he's got a Lammy in there as well. What? Like ink cartridges. You know, I'm ready to sign contracts. I'm not a fucking calligraphy. And he's literally got a notebook that he's that he's fucking all, fountain pen. By the way, quill. he's got a notebook that he's already for, like um, doodled over the whole thing, and 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 a pack of McCoy's crisps, ready sorted. The, are the most bland, most bland thing in the world as no, well. They're not actually because they're very salty. I really enjoy them. The most bizarre part, though, is Pete left a scent trail of intoxicate. Oh, I get this all the time, by the way, Charlotte. Yeah, Pete leaves a Pete leaves a. Uh, well, I'll, I'll finish this. The most bizarre part of this is Pete left a scent trail of intoxicating cologne. Those remaining in the office kept commenting on his lovely smell. One staff member, in legal, actually went into the meeting room Pete had been in, saying he must actually <laughs> he must have actually sprayed it in here. There's no way it can smell that strong. He left such a distinct trail that they could have followed him home. <laughs> the team then made Charlotte text Pete to ask him what the scent is. It turns out to be a mixture of different scents. Charlotte went home to her fiancé who asked her, who do you smell of? <laughs> now, I, no. Now, I promise you, this isn't us saying these things to, like, make you the listener laugh. I promise you, Pete douses himself in whatever the fuck it is, right? It's a beautiful smell, but it's like, he puts so much on, it's like petrol. It's like, it's it's such a strong, strong scent. Is it? You may, I can tell when Pete's, but yeah, see, everyone's nodding. I can tell, you need to just, I love the way I'm now being able to give Pete advice. You need to just relax on the scent. No, I don't. Because it's a beautiful scent. No. But it's like you've dunked yourself in it. Let me let me tell you why though. Um, as a lot of you know, I smoke, and there's nothing worse than the smell of stale smoke. So, so now do... we've got stale smoke, but w that we can still smell. No, but to being be fair, blended but listen, with but to be fair to me, do I really smell of smoke? So that's why I do, and it's because I spray in my hair. Because, <laughs> oh God! Because uh, you know, you hug people and you kiss people, and they get a little whiff of your barnet, don't they? The point. The point is is that Pete leaves a trail of smell behind him. And it is so true. I can taste Pete's smell right now. I can taste it on my tongue. You can't. I can. I can taste it. And Zara always knows when I've seen Pete. Always. Because she knows I smell so well. She goes, oh, Pete being here then, has he? And I'm like, yeah, yes. Well, I'm not going to stop because I, I smell like a fresh summer's meadow. Absolutely. Absolutely, no one's asking you to. You smell beautiful, better than me, I can tell you that much. But I'll be honest with you, from that meeting, I was looking more for, like, um, <laughs> thanks, applause, uh, not abuse. <laughs> um, you haven't, still haven't seen what we've got prepared. None of you have yet. But it is going to be great. Oh, fucking hell. I, I love promise that. you, it's going to be fucking great. As long as we execute it well, <laughs> oh, God. it's going to be great because the idea and the fundamentals are brilliant. Execution is something we struggle with. Yeah. And for me, elocution. But uh, it, it's going to be good. It's going to be, you're in for a fucking treat. So don't worry, anytime. See you there. I think that's us done for the day. That is us done for the day. That what is a beautiful episode. I've enjoyed. Can I just say what I think we've done with this episode? I think we've really humanized Pete today. Do you know what I mean? He's no longer sort of like, he's wearing a dash of pink. Like, he's just, we're talking about his, like, you know, his little notebook and his McCoys. Why is Pete suddenly becoming cute? Do you no, know what I mean? No, 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 he's no. He's becoming no. cute. I'm not now. a fucking puppy. Yeah. We're not starting that. Don't fucking smile at me, Chaz. We are not doing fucking, we are not doing cute. Touch my no, foot. Don't touch, touch me. Touch my foot. Th these are. You've just got fucking dirt on my pink shoes. I did, I just gave him to I'm Them sorry. About fucking that. grubby little lugs. <laughs> oh, and he's back. And he's back on that note. At the very end, Pete Wicks has hath returned. 
Uh, make sure you subscribe and follow at Staying Relevant Podcast on TikTok, Snapchat. Do you follow on Snapchat? Yeah, Snappy C. So subscribe on YouTube where uh, Monday's episode comes out every Friday and then Thursday's episode comes out every Sunday. So that's Monday, Thursday, Friday, yep. Sunday. Monday, Monday Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Friday Sunday. Sunday. Good, that didn't take as long. Uh, rate, subscribe, follow, write little reviews. Reviews have been good this week. I enjoyed have they? The re- yeah, I enjoyed the reviews this week. A lot of people still saying we love the king. But... But if there's anything else that you want to add into there, like, you know, thanks for the live tour, Pete, that would be great. I've got to say, um, just a, a word from, from us to you. We really love these reviews and we really love the ratings, you know, if they're, if they're a good rating, of course. So, yeah, if, if we can just keep plowing on, it'd be great. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>